Guys, this is Mubeen. We are talking about the pulmonology pathology. We just did a disease called bronchiectasis and one of the reasons in there is cystic fibrosis. It is important for us to understand what cystic fibrosis is. So this lecture is about cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is the most common hereditary disease which causes deaths in United States by the age of 20 or 30. It is a disease of Caucasians, 98 percent of the people affected by this disease are Caucasians. Very rare Asians and blacks have this disease. Asians I think it is 1 to 31,000 people and blacks 1 to 15,000. So common in whites, Caucasians. Now what is this disease? What happens is that there are on the chromosome number 7, so if this is a chromosome, chromosome number 7, there are three genes that get deleted. Three genes are deleted. These three genes that are deleted are responsible for phenylalanine. They are responsible for phenylalanine production. Now what happens is these genes are finally responsible to contribute proteins to CFTR. CFTR chloride is a CF transmembrane chloride regulator channel. What this is, is that this is a protein that helps form the channels that are for chloride, sodium and water. It is a cluster of the channels. In those, the abnormality of the phenylalanine genes would cause the CFTR complex to be abnormally formed. When that is abnormally formed, as soon as it is formed, it is degraded in Golgi operators. Why? Why is it degraded? Because the structure of the protein is not correct. The folding is not correct. And the Golgi operators looks at the proteins that are not folded correctly and it kills them. So the end result is that we have defective or abnormal or missing CFTR chloride genes. When that happens, the secretions of the body become abnormal and that then causes secondary problems that can even lead to death by the year of age of 30. So quite a serious disease. So now we are, what we are going to do is we are going to look at this disease in two sections. What happens in the sweat glands is a different kind of a problem compared to what happens in the rest of the secretory glands of the body. So let us look at what happens in the sweat. We know that the sweat when it is produced, so let us say this is a sweat gland cell, this is one more sweat gland cell. So the way the sweat is produced is we extrude the water and the sodium and chloride. Right? So these are thrown out and that becomes sweat in the gland. So that is a sweat. However, before this sweat can go out on the surface of the skin. So if this was skin surface, if this was skin here, before this fluid can go to the skin, what happens is that we reabsorb the chlorides. We reabsorb the chloride. It is going to be different over here. So please pay attention. We reabsorb sodium and we reabsorb some water. So chloride and sodium are actively reabsorbed, some water is reabsorbed as well. The result of that is that sort of hypotonic solution is formed and that solution then finally come out in the surface and that is the sweat. Cool? However, so once the chromosome has a problem and the CFTR abnormality is present, then what happens is that in these patients, the sweat glands actually do not have a normally functioning CFTR complex. The result of that is chloride is not reabsorbed, sodium is not reabsorbed. That also means that the water reabsorption is also less. And what will happen is that sweat becomes hypertonic. Remember when sweat, as I said here, when sweat is produced, it is hypertonic. Then before it is secreted out on the skin, it becomes hypertonic because we pull the ions out. When we have a problem here with the CFTR proteins, then the, those ions cannot be pulled out. So what we will end up with is hypertonic solution. 
that is why normally it is the mother who identifies the problem in the child first of all because when she kisses the child the child is salty so she comes to the doctor and says well my child is salty when i kiss him so that is the sweat test done by a mother and of course when you do the sweat test on these patients they have a lots of chloride ion concentration that is actually the test so here hypertonic solution now what would that cause that would cause heat exhaustion the solution is hypertonic we are throwing out a lots of ions that would cause dehydration for the patient and lots of fluid will be lost so that is on the sweat side what about the rest of the secretions so in the rest of the secretions what happens is that is this way that we have chloride that is secreted sodium is reabsorbed look this is different from here here chloride was reabsorbed sodium was reabsorbed here chloride is secreted sodium is reabsorbed and water is reabsorbed when this complex is abnormal then the behavior is different one chloride channel is not working so chloride becomes trapped inside the cell second sodium channels working becomes increased sodium channel becomes hyperactive as a result of the mutation and if sodium becomes hyperactive that will mean more water will also come in right so more sodium comes in that means more water comes in what do you think is going to happen to the secretions now the secretion that was present here we have pulled out a lot of ions from it we failed to give it chloride so already ions are less now we are pulling out more sodium which will cause more water to be pulled down so this this fluid here is actually isotonic and by the way this is the respiratory uh, passage and i'm talking about the secretion here this is the same mechanism for the pancreatic secretion for the liver secretion for the gall secretion for the ileal uh, surface secretions for the reproductive vas deferens areas so at the end of the day it is kind of the same mechanism everywhere so now what happens is as we pull more sodium and water out that leaves an almost isotonic solution but the quantity of the solution is now reduced because we have pulled out a bigger chunk back we have reabsorbed a lot so the result is this that the patient has very thin layers of solutions so now either the solutions are thick or they are very thin layers but these are dehydrated surfaces now do you think that the dehydrated surfaces imagine if you have not drunk uh, taken water for some time you become all dehydrated is it easy to move the tongue inside the mouth no it is just frictionful everywhere so when the surfaces are dehydrated it becomes really difficult to move these secretions and now anything that is dependent upon the movement of this secretion is not going to work so keep this in mind and now let us see what are the pathogenesis what will happen so we'll start from the skin outside so here is the human outside the skin what will you see you see more hypertonic secretion hypertonic increased secretion that would actually cause dehydration inside the body and heat exhaustion if you come inside first nasal polyps will be observed second as you go down in the chest area the bronchial pathways the airway passages will not be working correctly the mucociliary system will not work correctly why because we have thick mucus which is dehydrated mucus and we do not have enough fluids to easily propel the mucus up okay so that would cause infections those infections would lead to bronchiectasis we have done that in the bronchiectasis lecture so that is the effect on the respiration normally these patients die of respiratory failure by the age of 30 or even earlier and this problem is detected normally median age is 5 6 months this can actually be as soon as the baby is born and he has meconium ileus where his ileum will not work and the meconium is not ejected because of the problems with the thick and viscous secretions and the doctor would say well the stools are not there and they might start doing x rays and figuring out what is going on and they might detect that the patient has C cftr or cystic fibrosis 
So this is this is how early the disease starts. So the respiratory da damage, keep in mind, that is one of the primary causes of death. The second is the heart failure. Now, of course, that would cause bronchiectasis, dilatation, and destruction of the lung tissue. That would also cause, if we stay within the chest, this destruction would cause heart failure as well. The right heart, the right heart will become hypertrophied. Why? Not the left, the right heart. Cor pulmonale would develop. Why will the right heart be hypertrophied? Because right heart is pumping blood in the lungs and lungs are being destroyed and it is difficult for them to pump the blood in the lungs and that causes the hypertrophy of the right heart or core pulmonale. It is not acute core pulmonale, this will be chronic core pulmonale and one of the causes of death for the patients. Okay, let us continue moving downwards. Let us come to the upper part of the abdomen. What do we have gotten there? We have gotten liver. What have we gotten there? We have gotten liver, gallbladder, pancreas, spleen. So, spleen is something that does not take part in this problem. However, there is a problem with the secretions. So, what are the secretions here? Bile secretion through the gallbladder produced by the liver, brought to the gallbladder from then the gall, gall or cystic ducts into the GIT. Similarly, pancreatic secretions have to go to the GIT. So, these patients will not be able to release those secretions. Because of the dehydration, many times the, the lumens get clogged and the gland cannot actually push the secretion out. So, when there is a clogged gland, that becomes infected. When the glands are infected, that is, that is what is going to cause local inflammation and slowly the pancreas would start getting destroyed. So, chronic pancreatitis is a problem that occurs in cystic fibrosis. With that, diabetes would occur because pancreas is not working correctly. With that, the um, fat soluble vitamins will also not be absorbed correctly. Vitamins A, D, E and K. How do you remember that? Cat is on the attic. So, uh, fat soluble vitamins are A, D, E and K those vitamins deficiency might appear. Similarly, from the liver side, as the liver is not able to secrete the bile correctly, there would be bile stone, gallstones that would start developing because of the thick secretions that are not moving. Then the liver cirrhosis would start developing. It is a secondary biliary cirrhosis. Why secondary? Because the primary problem is the obstruction to the secretion and the secondary problem is that now the liver has gotten everything stuck in there and that would cause local inflammations in the liver as well and destruction of the liver tissue. So, cirrhosis would start occurring, so liver would have a problem, gall, bladder would have stones, uh, pancreatitis will occur, that was also cause malabsorption, then malabsorption related problems will start occurring. Then as you come down to the ileus, you would see that meconium, meconium ileus will develop where the patient, the child, newborn is unable to, to pass the meconium out in the stools because of the thick dry uh, layers, surfaces of the GIT. As you go down further, because of the difficulty in passing stools, it will become difficult to pass stools and so rectal prolapses and the hemorrhoids and those problems will occur. And then in males, what would happen is the vas deferens, vas deferens or ductus deferens, deferens, that brings, that brings the sperms to the urethra, that will not have, that would have thick secretions as well and so the sperms will get trapped there. So infertility will be seen. In some patients actually, do you know that this, these vas deferens will actually just be absent? And that may be the only uh, problem that you would see in these patients. Uh, there can be a problem with the, um, with the secretions in the, in the upper airways as well. And that is why the polyps because of the dryness of the, uh, the nasal passages. How do we screen for this? All newborn should be screened for immunoreactive trypsins. That is one. Number two, the, the sweat test should be done. Normally, the chloride ion presence is about 60 millimole per liter in the sweat. However, in the patients with the cystic fibrosis, it is 80 millimole per liter. So, that is a screening. How do you treat this? Of course, continuous infections 
repeated infections. So treat the infections that is one. Because of the cause of death is normally the respiratory failure which causes the air, uh, right heart failure as well. So it is really important to make sure that the respiratory system is correct. For the treatment you give antibiotics for the repeated infections, you give bronchodilators, you give steroids to children alternative days, vitamin replacements of course there is malabsorption so vitamin replacement has to be done and nowadays we also give the uh, aerosols deoxyribonuclease aerosols that help move this uh, mucociliary um, elevator a little bit. So these are the ways to support there is the physiotherapy as well there is lung rehabilitation as well and there can be lung transplant as well. Thank you.